great honor for us. Uh, it is a pleasure to have uh, uh, Kareem Adiprasito as one of uh, our speaker in the John Conway Spirited Seminar Series. Uh, so Kareem is a very active researcher who is working on, uh, I would say, cutting edge problems in the area of uh, innovative combinatorics and particularly his, uh, he's uh, quite in the limelight for proving many important results, uh, particularly his uh, uh, work with John Hu, who got uh, a field medal last year, and uh, particularly they, he is a part of uh, uh, this new, uh, a comparatively new area of combinatorial Hodge theory, uh, where they applied the tools from the Hodge theory to prove important results. And uh, I think uh, this seminar will give a brief introduction on uh, what is combinatorial Hodge theory and uh, many interesting uh, aspect which is related to it. Uh, over yeah. to you, Kari. I have one hour, right? Yeah. Okay. Good, thank you very much. So I will try to, to give like a brief introduction to, um, to, to combinatorial Hodge and left shed theory. I will focus on left shed theory because I have an hour and it's not, it's not so easy to, 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 to do somehow, to, to give an overview and that, uh, at the same time goes into some depth. Um, but um, so I want to start with a problem that probably everyone everyone understands. And I'd like to start with this problem, and it's um, so called. Uh, um, okay, let, let, here's, uh, it goes back to an observation of 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 Euler and Descartes. And the question you can ask yourself is: Okay, so we know what a planar graph is, right? Let's say okay, so we want to understand how many. Um, edges um, uh, a planar graph can have, right? I have a given number of vertices and I'm asking for the number of uh, edges, all right? So I should outlaw a few different things for this. You, you still hear me, right? I don't... Yeah, we can hear yes, you. Yes. We can, uh, yes, because we for can. some reason this, this side yeah, window uh, dis disappeared. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. I, I switch off my camera. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's good. This might be the reason, okay. Yeah, I can, I, my, my, my reason, I only have my tablet here. So if, if I switch on my camera, you only see my forehead. Okay, good. Um, and okay, so we have, our, we have a given number of vertices, right? And then we can uh, ask how many edges there can be. Okay, so I have a, a, um, some vertices that I draw here, here, and here, and here. And then I can ask how many edges can I draw. Now, of course, I could should outlaw basic things, right? Some more like loops, right? Because I can always add as many loops as I want without increasing the number of vertices. And I should outlaw double edges. So the, it's a it's a simple graph in the plane, right? And then you can ask yourself, well, how many can I draw? And um, well, the proof and the, the the result is quite simple. So what is the result? Um, well, how do you how do you approach this? Well, you can you see that I can always continue to, to draw edges until every region is essentially a triangle, right? Even the region at infinity. So this is a triangle, right? So yeah, this is a triangle, this is a triangle, this is a triangle, and infinity is a triangle, right? So this is, all I, okay, so, okay. And then, then I, what I have is, I have, I have two basic formulas, right? I have vertices minus edges plus triangles is equal to two. And I have um, the basic result that if I look at, um, if I do a little double counting, so if I look at um, the edges and triangle pairs such that edge, uh, edges in triangle, then um, what I have is um, triangles that, well, okay, so three times the edges is equal to two times, sorry, that's, that's the wrong way around. It's two times the edges, right? Because every edge is in two triangles is three times the triangles. This is the way that. Sorry, I didn't sleep last night because I had a long flight, but uh, yeah. so I, there might be some mistakes I make now. All right, so the results and so on that we get then is essentially that the number of edges is at most three times the number of vertices. Okay? And that's rather simple, right? Simple and beautiful. You can't get simpler, right? It's a very simple bound. 
And now, of course, I mean, the simplest question that you can always ask in every talk, and you can ask in my talk as well, is what about higher dimensional spaces, right? So um, a graph into, so graphs into higher dimensional spaces are kind of boring because every graph embeds into a higher dimensional space. But what we can do is we could look at um, a simplicial complex, okay? So simplicial complex is just a collection of, of simplices that are small, that are glued together. And I'm, I'm mapping them into R3. And it turns out that R3 is kind of a boring question because you can actually solve this using the plain, the planarity, okay? So you can, don't, don't need this, you can just go back. So delta, um, um, this goes back to the, to the planar case, okay? And what instead we can do, we can look at delta embedded into R4, okay? Delta embedded into R4 is an interesting question because if you just draw this in general position, then you expect um, the, 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 the two-dimensional faces to intersect uh, in, in zero-dimensional sets, they intersect transversely. Hence, you get um, the minimal kind of the, the minimal kind of the, the minimal number of, of uh, intersections, at least if you kind of try just embed it generically, right? At least heuristically. And now you can ask, well, how many, how many of these two-dimensional faces that somehow will obstruct my, my, my embedding will actually have? And this is actually a really, it was a really hard problem. So it was, it was open for a long time because several tricks that work in the plane don't work in high dimensional space. So for instance, I cannot always add another triangle without adding an edge um, to the simplicial complex um, and, and, and get something until I'm at a triangulation that just doesn't work. And here's the theorem that exists. Okay, so theorem, and this is uh, my own results in 2018. And then um, there was a, a new proof that is small. Okay, the, the new proof is somehow uh, relies on the same technique, but it's small. It's Papadakis, Petrotu, and then there's a joint work with, uh, with Papadakis and Petrotu. So it's 2021, and then. Uh, okay, and the theorem is that um, if delta embeds in a PL way into R2D, then the number of D faces, delta, is at most D plus two times the number of D minus one faces, all right? So this, I mean, if, if D is equal to one, this gives the Euler Descartes. Formula. And if D is equal to two, this implies that the number of triangles in a four dimensional superficial complex is at most four times the number of edges. All right? So that's clear. Okay, so these are, this, this is the result. Um, and what I want to do is I want to convince you that um, algebraic geometry and Hodge theory has something to do with that. And then I, I want to say why it is necessary to pass to this combinatorial Hodge theory in left field theory. Okay. Stop me at any time if you have questions. Also, I, I will make many mistakes. As I said, I didn't sleep last night. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, Karim, uh, can you explain uh, once again uh, what, what this inequality means? Uh, so it means only d dimensional faces of the simplicial complex has. Okay. It means uh, that the d dimensional faces. Yeah. All right. At most, uh, at most, d minus d plus two times the num d minus one dimensional faces of delta. Okay. Okay. So um, let's look at the case where, when if d is equal to one, then I have a simplicial complex that embeds into R two. All right. This is an mm -hmm. d is two, two times one. It's R two. So then, what it says is that the one dimensional faces. The one dimensional faces of a superficial complex are exactly the edges, right? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, at most, d plus two, so that's three times the number of d minus one dimensional faces of the simplicial complex. Okay, and okay. the result the result holds for d dimensional simplicial complexes, right? This is holds for all d. For all d. Right? Okay. For all d. okay. 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 Right? Okay. 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 
Um, yeah, thank you. It doesn't matter. It's, it's not the condition. It's just that you embed. It. Okay. What it doesn't matter. The, the dimension uh, of the complex does not matter. Yeah. Yeah. May I ask what does PL stand for? Ah, okay. PL stands for piecewise linear. Okay, piecewise so, linear. Got yeah. it. Got PL is piecewise linear. PL is piecewise linear. Which means that, um, well, okay, so it's, uh, okay, so it just means that somehow there's a, there's a way of, of 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 writing the map such that um, it's composed of a finite number of of of, of linear of fine linear maps. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. So it uh, just says that if I have an edge like this, then I can I can the image can look like this. It can be look a little broken, but it's it's broken a finite number of times. Okay, that's all. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, how would one go about solving such a question or proving such a theorem? Um, so, the idea here is to um, to use a little algebra. So, one 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 trick is. If instead of embedding delta into R 2D, what we do, we embed it into S 2D. Okay. S 2D is just a 2D dimensional sphere. Okay. That's, that's, that's something we can do. So R 2D, we can just compactify, right? So the, the line compactifies to a circle, All right? So, and now instead of looking at this uh, delta as a embedded into S to D, what I can do is I can think of S to D as a triangulated sphere. So this is a subcomplex, sorry, subset, not an element, a subcomplex inside sigma, and this is a triangulated sphere. Okay. Okay. All right. And now, okay, so now I have a sphere. And now what I can do is I just can associate some nice objects to this. So a sphere I can think of as a fan, okay, as a complete fan. So if I have a sphere, I can I can kind of draw it around the origin. It's a slight lie because I cannot always do this, but let's lie a little. Okay, so let's say, let's let's say all spheres can draw be drawn around the origin. And then what a fan is just a collection of cones. That's a that's a fan. Fan is just okay. So simplicial complex is glued out of simplices. All right. And right, like it looks like this. And the, a fan is glued out of simplicial cones, so cones over simplices. Uh, yeah. That's it. That's a fan. Okay, and this is a fan. So I, I think of this as a fan. Now, what I do is I associate, and this is kind of the coolest thing ever, um, I associate an algebra to this. So I want to, uh, in fact, this algebra describes a rather complicated object. It's called the, the it's, it's called the, the Chow ring, the associated uh, toric variety, but it's simple to define. So if I have this algebra, if I have this fan, I can associate the algebra of piecewise polynomial functions or cone-wise polynomial functions, okay? P of sigma, these are the cone-wise polynomial functions. Okay, so these are functions from sigma to the reals. Okay, that are continuous. And they are polynomial on each cone. On each cone. All right, so this it's a polynomial here. Right. On, the, on this cone, it's a polynomial. On this cone, it's a polynomial. It's a polynomial, 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 and so on. 
Okay. Yep. And this is a graded object. It's a graded ring. So I can talk about degree here. There are degree one functions, right? So there, there are the degree fun the, the, the function of degree one are exactly the cone-wise linear functions, right? So P1 sigma. These are the cone-wise product, cone-wise. Okay. So this is just an example. Um, in fact, I can I can describe a generating set for them, right? So here's a way to generate the cone-wise linear functions. It's it's rather easy. So what I do is I I, I take a ray, right? So I have my I have my fan. Right now I want to 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 take a ray. Let's say this one here. And now I take a function, chi r, and it's defined, I define it all along the rays, okay? I define that it's non-trivial and linear here. So it's non-trivial and linear on this ray. And it's zero on all other ones. It's zero on this one, or zero on this, zero on this, zero on this, zero on this. Sorry, there's some, for some reason, the second color is a rainbow color. I don't know why. Okay, it's zero there. And now, because the, the functions are linear on each cone, this means that it's, uni unit, it's, it's uniquely determined by this information, right? It's linear, it's more, I have it, it's de determined here because I know it here and here, and it's determined here because it, I know it here and here, and so on and so forth. This is characteristic function, this is called the characteristic function of the ray, okay? Characteristic function of the ray R. All right. Uh, it's, it, okay. Is it a characteristic function or is it the, because okay. linear- You're right, okay. I don't know who's speaking, but you're right, because in principle I could say, okay, I, it's unique up to scalar only. That's right. Okay, okay. Right? It's unique up to scalar only. Okay, let's let, let's not go into it then. But I mean, up to scalar, it's unique. Okay, that's it. Okay, up to scalar multiplication. Okay. Um, all right. And this is an interesting. This is this is an interesting uh, object. This algebra. It's it's a graded algebra. It's generated in decay one, right? Um, meaning that uh, everything is an is a product of things in decay one. Um, and um, that's that, that's already it's more, that's, that, that's kind of a very powerful powerful thing. And now what I can do is I can I can look at this this algebra, right? And I want it to more, it describes in some way it, it it contains information about the combinatorics, right? It contains information because it I, I know about uh, the, 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 I mean, I, the faces, right? Well, the, the rays, for instance, they generate. And now what I want to do is I want to take this algebra and kind of take out boring information. So the information that is nothing to do with the combinatorics. And this is, well, what is boring? Well, everything that does not depend on the fan structure, right? On the number of rays, for instance. So what I take is that I, I take, sorry, I, I should write it this way. Um, I take the following quotient. I take A of sigma, and this is P of sigma, modulo the ideal generated by global linear functions. All right. So this is uh, the, I take the functions that are linear everywhere, right? So entirely linear, and take the ideal of that, right? So so it's an algebra, so I can take the ideal of, 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 of something, all right, of a generating set, some set. And this is my ideal, I, I take the quotient by that. And this, I obtain the smaller algebra. And this algebra A now contains really a lot of information about the combinatorics. So let me, um, so uh, you, can, you, can, you can ask, uh, for instance, um, I think Imran or Shaheen, they will explain to you, that um, if, I, if I look at the 
um, the graded the graded uh, um, the, the, the the Hibbert series of this. Right? So if I look at the dimension of this AI, so this ring A in degree I, this is exactly what is called the H number. Okay. I will not actually need this for now. I will need this, won't need this today. I will not explain this, but you can ask them to explain the H numbers. Okay. Um, so this here as a real vector space, the dimension is HI. Okay. All right, but there are some other deformation. I can I can give you some bounds in terms of the face numbers that are kind of interesting. Um, so for instance, if I look at um, okay, so um, which which case were they, was I interested? In? Well, I was in the in this case where um, hmm. oh, okay, let, okay, let, let, let me let me first say for some general things. Okay, so so if big D is the dimension of sigma, then what we have is that um, a big D of sigma, this is isomorphic to the real numbers. Okay. And uh, just one question. Yeah. Um, so you did not define what does a uh, the I mean? Uh, oh. so, yeah, yeah. So what yeah. is a, what is, what is A in degree I? So this is a, A is a graded object. It's a graded ring, right? So P okay. was a graded ring, right? Right, yes, yes. Okay, I get it now. Okay, okay. so no, it's, a, it's okay. It's a good, it's a, P is a graded ring. And therefore, because this here is a homogeneous ideal, so it's an ideal generated by, by elements of, of uniform degree, the quotient is again graded. So it still has a degree. And so I can still talk about the linear functions and so on and so forth. And yes. I, AI is just the functions of degree AI, okay? All right, thank, thank you for the interruption. Thank you. Okay. thank you very much. Okay, so AD is isomorphic to the real numbers. Okay, that's, that's one cool fact. And it gets even better. AI, and a d minus i are kind of isomorphic in the sense that, okay, so if I multiply something in degree i with something in degree d minus i, then I land in degree d, all right? And this is isomorphic to the reals, all right? And this is a bilinear, okay, so this is a bilinear pairing, right? And it's perfect. This pairing is perfect. Meaning that, um, I mean, a bilinear pairing being perfect means that it doesn't have, doesn't degenerate on either, on either side, right? So you have a, if you have a, a bilinear form, you can think of as a matrix and just what it says is that this associated matrix is just a full rank, okay? In particular, right, if this matrix is a full rank, then the dimension of these spaces are the same. So the dimension of AI is the same as the dimension of AD minus I. And Imran and Osha Hingler will explain to you that these hi, which means that hi is equal to hd minus i, these are the Dane sum of the root functions. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right, the Dane sum of the relations, all good and nice. But what's, what else? Well, okay, so I, I, I mean, so, I haven't actually connected this in any way to the combinatorics. And let me do this in the case that we are interested in. So we were interested in this case when big D is um, two times small d, right? And then we wanted to estimate the number of D faces and the number of D minus one faces. So if I look at the number of D minus one faces, right? If I look at the number of D minus one faces, of let's say of sigma, then it turns out okay. So what what if I want to I want to write down uh, a generating? Let's say I want to write down a generating system for um, AI. Right? I want to write a, a, a I want to know the size of AI. 
of sigma, right? This is a vector space, right? And now what do I do? I want to write down, okay, so I have to, if I have a vector space to estimate the dimension, I have to write down a generating system, right? And so it turns out, okay, so it turns out that this here is generated by the cardinality I minus one faces. Okay, so this is generated by the cardinality I minus one faces. Oh, sorry, cardinality I faces. All right, so cardinality I, cardinal, cardinality two phase, a cardinality two phase is exactly uh, a one dimensional phase, right? The cardinality one phase is a vertex, so it's a zero dimensional. So this is exactly fi minus one. So what I get is the following. I get that the dimension of AD um, of sigma is bounded from above by the number of D minus one phases, all right? It cannot be larger because that's a generating system. So this extends to delta, all right? AD delta. Um, is this an FD minus one bit? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can also I can also estimate the same. I can also do a similar trick and estimate the dimension from below. So how do I, how would I estimate the, the size of such a space from below? Let's say, for instance, delta. Well, okay, what I write down, okay, so now I estimated the size of the space by a generating set. Now what I do, I turn it around. I estimate the size of a space by uh, looking at the generating set and then looking at the number of relations. And it turns out that the number, okay, so the generating set is the cardinality D plus one phases, so the dimension D phases, delta minus the number of relations, and it turns out that this number of relations is at most fd, uh, d plus one times fd minus one of delta. Okay? Yeah? This is because, okay, so the relations, the relations come from one dimension down, right? They come from all the multiplications from lower. Okay? All right. So, now we wanted what what did we want remember that we wanted the following inequality f d is less or equal to um d plus two f d minus one of delta right uh, uh cream uh, probably uh oh okay so now yeah. you started talking all in a sudden you started talking about uh, the simplicial complex delta instead of the subdivision right Huh? So I, I never talked about the subdivision. What's what do you mean? Ah, I, 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 I'm interested in delta, right? I mean, I don't care about I don't care about sigma. I want to know the number of faces of delta. Okay. 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 Ah, okay. So I should say, okay, so the, what is A of delta? I should define it. Maybe I didn't define it. Okay, so right. So if I if I have um if I have P of sigma. Mm -hmm. Then I can just restrict it to P of delta, right? Because it's a subcomplex. These are just okay. These are the cowise. These are the cowise polynomials on sigma, and these are the cowise polynomials on delta, which is a smaller set. And this is a surjection, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Because it's just a restriction. Okay, that's right. Thanks for pointing this out. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, where, was I, where was I? Okay, so I have this, I want this, I want, right? Want this. But if you look at this inequality, so if, if you look at these two inequalities here, then what, um, what this reduces to is that I want to prove that dimension AD of delta is
Okay, that's a, already, I mean, this inequality is quite beautiful, but if you think about it, this inequality is really much more beautiful, right? It's a just, I mean, it's, it's, it, there's not, no factor. And it, it's as nice as you get. So how do we prove this? Right? How do we prove this equation? How do we prove this inequality? Um, well, okay, so let's let's go back to sigma. For sigma, we have well, a d of sigma being isomorphic to a d plus one of sigma. All right. Mm -hmm. In particular, the dimensions are the same. Dimension is equal to this dimension. Why is that true? Because because of Poincaré duality, right? I have um, that uh, I have that uh, a um, a d of sigma times a d plus one of sigma. This is a perfect pairing. All right, they had the perfect pairing to the reals. All right, this perfect pairing is perfect, hence these spaces are as more. All right, but I don't have this, okay, so I don't have this, uh, this marvelous result. I, I, I don't have this for delta, not true for delta. For delta. Okay. But now you can go and do algebraic jumps because there's a stronger theorem. So there's a following theorem. If sigma is a d dimensional fan and L in A1 of sigma um, is convex. It's actually strictly convex, and I will explain what I mean by strictly convex, but it's not in the classical convex geometry sense. On, on sigma. So what does strictly convex mean? Uh, convex, okay, so it's convex plus something. So it's, what does what does a strictly mean? It strictly means that the the regions where you are linear, right? So regions where you're linear exactly coincide with the fan. So for instance, here's a fan. And the function that was not me would not be strictly convex, right? I could just I can just draw the level set at one. And here's a function that is not strictly convex because it's linear. You see that it's linear on this entire region, but the domains of linearity they should exactly be this region and this region. Okay, mm -hmm. but that's not the case. So strictly convex means. Whenever you see a face, the function has to break. It has to be nonlinear. Okay. Whenever you see a ray, you have to be nonlinear. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's strictly convex. Then what we have, okay, so we had this isomorphism between degree between AI and A D minus I. Right? But we have it now in a stronger sense, meaning that we have this. L to the D minus two I. And this multiplication takes us from there to there. And this is an isomorphism. And this is what is called the hard left shed symbol. Hard left shed property. Okay. This is uh, one, one key fact. Here's another. Um, uh, uh, Krim, can you explain this map a i to d minus a d minus i? Um, well, okay. So if I multiply with l once, right, then I mm -hmm. get from a i to a i plus one. Yeah, okay. Okay, then now I just do this d minus oh, two i. Okay. okay, generic generators. What? So generic terms of uh, degree d minus two, the product uh, which is uh, defining this map, 
I mean, L, I, I have L here, right? L is convex. L is an element in A1. It's a convex okay. function. Yeah. It's not, a, there's no generic here yet. Okay. Right? It's just a concrete L that I gave you. And there's another factor that is important. This is called the Hodge, this is where the name Hodge comes in for us. Yeah. So this is a called so called Hodge Riemann relations. Hmm. So, meaning that, okay, so I, what I can do is I can look at AI. And I can look at the mult the, the, the function the, the bilinear product of AI on AI itself. And what I what, how do I define this? Well, I take I want this to go to the real. So what, what I do is I take an element little a and an element little b, and I map it to L to the d minus 2i times a times b, right? Because l times d times 2i, l, this here is in a d minus i, uh, big D, and this here is in degree i. And so then I have this pairing, right? I have this Poincaré pairing. Okay, so I have this, I have this map. This, this is called usually the Hodge Riemann bilinear form. It's called QLI. Okay? Depends on L and the degree I. And now the statement is that this Hodge Riemann bilinear form um, is, okay, so is, this is primitive, is, is definite, right? It's a bilinear form, so it's definite, it's quadratic. So a definite uh, of sine minus one to the i on a certain subspace on PL AI, where PL AI is the kernel of AI to a D minus I plus one induced by the multiplication with L to the D minus two I plus one. Okay, so this is a certain subspace of AI. Okay, so this is called the Hodge Riemann relations. And usually, some of the hard left shed theorem and the Hodge Riemann relations are kind of proven in tandem. Okay, by the way, should I leave some? Five minutes for questions, or what is it? So, should I take fifteen minutes, or? Uh, yeah, uh, it is better to take uh, uh, to stop at fifty minutes. Okay. Fifty, fifty. Okay. Good. Um, um, all right. So these are called hot relations, and these are these are two deep. These two these these are deep results in algebraic geometry. Hard left shots property in hot relations, um, and. They are they're, they're, they're classically they were they are not so easy to come by. They were not so easy to prove the first time. I mean later it was discovered that there's a there's a good reason, a simple reason that um, they hold and, and now right now it's kind of easy for everyone, but it's still it's small. It's, it's a rather deep algebraic thing. Okay. And it comes from the fact, I mean originally it comes from the fact that there is a variety, uh, X called X sigma associated to this fan, it's called the toric variety and the cohomology of this variety is isomorphic to this A ring, okay? All right, and this somehow, then you use geometry for this variety of the left shift problem. All right, but so how does this help? Well, it helps in the following way. So let's look at we were looking at a d of sigma, right? And we are, we were now we know that okay, so a d and a d plus one of sigma, we know that they are isomorphic. But we are we now we know this in a more concrete way. We know that this isomorphism is induced by an element l. Okay. Okay, so this isomorphism is induced by this element L, and now what? Okay, so this this is this isomorphism, and I have also the subjection to A of delta, A D of delta. 
All right. And here I have the subjection to a d plus one of delta. All right. Mm -hmm. And okay, so now I have okay, so I have down here I have this induced map del induced multiplication with L like this. Okay, so now I claim that this map down here is a surjection. Why is that? Well, okay, so let's say let's say I have an element X here, and I want to say that it's in the image. Well, okay, so I can follow the map up here, right? I can, this is a commutative diagram. I can follow the map up here, and I know that there's an element here such that Y times L times the restriction maps to X, but then I can just map it down here, right? And then I have uh, the restriction Y maps to X. That's it, right? L times Y maps to X. Mm -hmm. is equal to X. Okay. This means that this here is a surjection. But now, if I have a surjection, then I have that the dimension of A delta in degree D is, um, um, sorry, the delta in degree D is at least the dimension of A D plus one delta. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Um, and that's uh, that's that's the point. But the problem is okay. So problem. All right. Warning. Problem. An L convex does not always exist. Well, convex exists, but strictly convex does not always exist. All right. So the problem is that we don't, we cannot actually use this famous theorem. This is this important theorem, right? This here, this classical Hodge theory. So this is classical Hodge theory. This theorem does not actually hold. Right, in our situation, they don't actually have it. So, and this is where combinatorial origin left shed theorem comes. So, we need to find a proof of this theorem. Um, a proof of this theorem that does not, uh, or we, we need to find a replacement of this theorem. Okay. So, how do we replace it? That's a question. Idea. And the idea here is to use so-called genericity properties. So uh, instead of looking at um, instead of looking at a given uh, given sigma, right, a given fan sigma. So I have my fan sigma. I notice that there are all kinds of fans with the same combinatorics, right, with the same combinatorial structure. I could like I, I could vary this this fan a little. To this fan, right? This ray just perturbed a little, and the combinatorics is still the same. So the combinatorial question is still the same. It's just that the geometry has changed a little, All right? So the generic structure. Okay, and then the, what? What? What theorem do we get? And this is a kind of the important part. theorem, um, and this is uh, the main theorem of that of myself. Um, where I proved it uh, somehow. It's, it, it's a very complicated proof. And then um, Papadakis and Petrutu provided another proof, 21. And then uh, uh, myself and uh, Papadakis and Petrutu. I mean, there are some slight restrictions because they work in characteristic too. But, uh, I mean, this is really a brilliant proof of, of Papadakis and Petrutu. It's because it's much, much simpler. And this is a characteristic, which, I mean, it's a characteristic tool, so it's not every field, but it, it's a minor caveat for us. All right. And this is um, for a generic fan sigma with given combinatorics, given combinatorial structure. And L in A1 
of sigma generic. You know, okay, so what does generic mean? Generic just means that there's an open dense set from which I can choose and I'm good. Okay, so there's a complement of some, there's a complement of some algebraic set, and I'm, as long as I'm not in this algebraic set, I'm fine. Okay, that's it. All right. And what's the theorem then? Well, we have the hard Lefschetz property that AI and a d minus i are isomorphic. Why this multiplication d minus two i? Okay. Um, and we have a replacement. So we don't have the Hodge Riemann relations. That's an issue. The Hodge Riemann relations don't hold anymore. Um, it's we we have still this we have this bilinear form still, but uh, we will not be able to say that this is a definite of a, of a of a sign of any sign. But we have the following results. So, um, if characteristic two is equal to two, then this form is, is totally anisotropic. Then for all U in, um, in, um, in AI of um, AI of Sigma, that are not, is not equal to zero. Uh, we have Q and U is just U times U times L to the D minus uh, two I. This is not zero. Okay, so it sounds a little bit uh, like this should always be true, but this is kind of a subtle state. And if car is more, if characteristic, uh, if the characteristic is arbitrary, then um, what we have is that this form QLI does not degenerate at any monomial ideal. So what does this mean? Okay, so it, this just means that, okay, so we don't know the signature, right? We don't know that somehow this is definite of some sign, right? We don't know that it's positive definite or negative definite is Q. But we know that it doesn't degenerate. So the, I mean, even if we pass to a subspace, we already know that it's globally, it, it's not degenerate, right? But even if we pass to some subspace defined by, well, by any element or by a monomial element, it will still not degenerate. And that's the, the key factor. Once we have that, this gives us uh, tomorrow. Then, then you can show that tomorrow, this implies left sheds and so on and so forth. Um, it's, I mean, this is not so complicated, but uh, in, um, this is kind of the, the important innovation that, is, that these properties hold. All right, and these are the, that's, that's kind of 49 minutes. So I guess I, I should stop here and open for questions. I can also yeah. turn on the, the video now because, okay, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kareem. Uh, is there any question? Uh, yeah, now we can see you. <laughs> okay, uh, are there any questions from the audience? Can we uh, put the main theorem that we got from this talk so that we can maybe uh, oh. think, uh, good reference, maybe a reference and the theorem, main theorem? Oh, okay. yeah. The theorem, yeah. I, can, I, can, I can, the reference is, I mean, you can look into my original paper, Lefschetz theorems beyond positivity. Mm -hmm. um, Imran can probably send it oh, to you okay. or can probably put it in the chat. You can probably put it in the chat while I write it down. So one of the main corollaries of it was this Greenbaum conjecture, right? Delta, embed delta into R2D. Mm -hmm. By the way, the case where I don't have a PL embedding is still open, okay? If the embedding is not PL, I don't know. It's my require PL embedding. Um, then the corollary was that FD of delta is at most d plus two times the d minus one phases of delta. Yeah. 
Kareem, uh, the one with the anisotropy biased pairing. Huh? No, no, no. no. I mean, if you want this corollary or to or to get this, then you should look into the original one by by me. And it's in um, it's in Lefschetz theorem positivity. It's in 2018. 2018. Okay, let me just yeah, like in December 2018. Yeah, got it. Combinatorial efficient theorem beyond positivity. Let me just put it there. It is in the chat now. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, Kareem, uh, it's just uh, one uh, one curious question. Uh, uh, what about its uh, uh, relation with the uh, Katona's criteria, crystal Katona? Uh, so... I don't know that there is a good relation because, uh, yeah, okay, so you're looking at this uh, minor close, but I don't know whether there's a good relation. So um, okay. this is a kind of numerical criterion um, mm -hmm. that, um, um, so I don't know that implies Kuska Katona. Um, it is also, it's not clearly clear that uh, um, that uh, any any sort of topological obstruction theory would imply this. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. or something like that, but it's, uh, I, yeah, it's not clear here. Hmm. Okay, okay. Is there is a there question any other... in the chat or? Uh, there is no question in the no, chat. Is there, is there any other question from the participant or comments? Quick comments. Okay, I just want to thank the speaker. That was a very nice talk. Thank you so much, Kareem. Uh, uh, um, all right. Thank you very uh, much. And if you have any uh, uh, more questions later or so, you can uh, just send me an email. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your talk. And I hope uh, to have you once again sometime in order to explain this. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to come in yeah. person at some point. Yeah. 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 Thank uh, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. Bye. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.